hello everybody so this is vaishali uh, i'm a product expert on zoho books and i'll be your host for today's webinar so i'm very happy to welcome you all for our session today so we have with us uh, anvish shetty who's a practicing chartered accountant based from bangalore he's also a certified zoho box trainer he has recently recorded a certificate course on blockchain for finance professionals mainly during dealing in various nuances of blockchain covering cryptocurrency nfts and decentralized financial applications and accounting of crypto assets thank you so much for joining us today anvish uh so from 1st of april uh, we have two critical mandates that will come into effect in indian business so which is e invoice and audit rail so in this webinar we'll be covering the latest updates on these regulations impact of invoicing and audit trail for indian businesses and how zoho books can help you stay e invoice and audit trail compliant so we'll also have a q and a session and answer all your queries on the subject so without any further ado i'll now hand over the session to anvesh over to you anvesh thank you vaishali at the very outset a warm good afternoon to all the audience so we'll straight away begin our session just give me a moment i'll be sharing my screen Uh, why shall i could you confirm if my screen is visible yes yes go ahead perfect so now in the next 30 to 45 minutes that we are going to talk about e invoicing there are a couple of new things that we are going to learn now let us start so the one thing that you need to understand even before we jump into the concept of e invoicing is something called as interoperability so this is one word that you need to understand so what exactly is interoperability let us take one very simple example to understand this let us say that i am preparing one balance sheet i am preparing a balance sheet using a spreadsheet software now you must be aware that different companies offer different spreadsheet softwares for example apple has their own spreadsheet software Microsoft has a spreadsheet software called as MS Excel. Google has their spreadsheet software called as Google Sheets. Now the question is, if I prepare a balance sheet using Apple devices, question is, can I open that balance sheet using my Windows or Microsoft device? Answer is no. So interoperability simply means output generated from one software should be easily read by another platform. So if I'm creating something in Apple platform, I should be able to read in Windows platform. I should be able to read in another platform. So that is where comes the question. If I want a output that should be read by different platforms, then what should I do? So somebody may say, why don't I generate my balance sheet in PDF? So if I generate my balance sheet in PDF, then even using Windows computer, you can see. Even using Apple devices, you can read. Even using Android mobile phones, you can read the balance sheet. so pdf is capable of being read in different platforms whereas an output that is generated from microsoft excel is not you cannot read in other platforms so this is the first thing that we need to understand so now why are we discussing this so let us say just like when i am preparing balance sheet if i have to prepare one invoice now this invoice whatever i am preparing i should be able to send it to my user my customer or even to the tax department and they should be able to read my invoice now you may say then why don't i prepare my invoice itself in pdf format because just now we agreed that if i prepare my invoice in a pdf format then everybody can read in different platforms but the issue here is pdf is in a human readable format that is if i look at the pdf then i can understand it but pdf is generally not in a machine readable language so machines cannot automatically fetch data from pdfs so that is where there was a need for something called as e invoice now so now as i was saying let's say that i generate one invoice in a pdf format now what am i going to do i am going to give it to my buyer because even buyer has to enter in his system now the issue is buyer has appointed one accountant and he has to key in certain data in his software now as humans we tend to make some errors 
So invoice number, let us say it is 198. I may enter it as 189. The value instead of entering as 10,000 rupees, I may enter it as 1 lakh rupees. Now I am not just blaming my buyer's accountant. Now let us say I prepared my invoice and at the end of the month, I will send all my invoice data to my accountant and I will say file my GSTR1 return. Now, even this human, while he is keying in data for GSTR1, he may make some mistakes or forget about GSTR1. If I am asking one more employee of mine to generate e-way bill, now while generating e-way bill also, he'll be looking at the PDF copy of that invoice or a hard copy of that invoice and he'll be keying in certain data for e-way bill. Now, he may make some mistakes. There are countless judgments where a uh, vehicle was inter intercepted saying that the data what is there in the invoice is not matching with that of eBay bill. So there are so many problems. Now talking from a buyer's point of view, buyer has entered something in his uh, books and then he is comparing his, with his GSTR 2B. The data with GSTR 2B is not matching with the books. The data in GSTR 2B is not matching with GSTR 3B. So either you have to appoint a reconciliation expert in your organization or we want this e invoice. Now, before I proceed further, I want to clarify something. So there is a term in English, something called as misnomer, which simply means a wrong or inaccurate use of a name or a term. So whenever I use the word e-invoice, normally people or generally people would think that I'm only referring about invoices only. But in reality, whenever they're using the term something called as e-invoice, they are talking about three things. They're talking about e-invoice, they are talking about e-credit note. They are also talking about e-debit note. So throughout the session, whenever I'm, I'll say e-invoice, I am referring to three documents. That is invoice, credit note, as well as debit note. Now, one may have a question in his mind that if e-invoice is applicable to me, because e-invoice is not applicable to everybody, in the upcoming slide I'll talk about to whom it is applicable, to whom it is not applicable. As of now, hypothetically, let us imagine that for you, it is mandatory to issue e-invoice. Now, what happens if you don't issue an e-invoice? Let's say you prepare a traditional invoice and you give it to your buyer. Now, what is going to happen? I'll give a very small example. In cricket, there is one rule. The rule says a bowler is not oversteps the line while bowling. If he oversteps that line, then it becomes a no ball. So even in that ball, even if he takes a wicket, umpire is not going to consider that. Similarly, in GST provision, there is a rule that is rule 48 sub rule 5, which simply says every invoice issued by a person to whom sub rule 4 applies in any manner other than the manner specified in such sub rule shall not be treated as an invoice. In simple word, if e-invoice provisions are applicable to you and if you still don't issue an e-invoice, then whatever the document that you are issuing will not be treated as an invoice. Now comes the question, if it is not treated as an invoice, what it is treated as? It will be treated as you have never issued the invoice. Now what will happen if you don't issue the invoice? There are a series of penalty provisions which says if you supply goods or services without issuance of invoice, supplier may attract certain penalties. Now is it only for the supplier? Answer again is no. Even for the buyer, there is a risk. Now what is the risk? If you read a section which talks about input tax credit, that is section 16, subsection 2, clause B. It says, if you want to claim input tax credit, you need to have invoice. Now, what invoice they're referring to? They're referring to e-invoice. So, if a seller to whom a e-invoice provisions are applicable, if he does not give you e-invoice, if he gives you a normal invoice, then that piece of paper is not called as invoice at all. So even if you have purchased goods from him, even if you have paid amount to him, even if he has filed his return, you will still not get the input tax credit. So for both seller and buyer, they need to be extremely cautious about this particular rule. So that is to say that even if you don't qualify to issue e invoice as a buyer, you should be cautious that whether your seller is actually complying with law or not. Now, let us talk about applicability. Now, this is the important aspect that all of you should understand. Now, to whom it is applicable? So, law simply says provisions of e invoice is applicable if your turnover, if your aggregate turnover exceeds 20 crore rupees. Now, which year are they talking to? Are they talking about the current year or are they talking about the previous year? The law simply says 
टेक फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड एंड सेवेंटीन एटीन सेवेंटीन एटीन और एटीन नाइनटीन और नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी और ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन और ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू सो इन ऑल दिस इयर्स इफ यूर एग्रीगेट टर्न ओवर एक्सीड्स ट्वेंटी क्रो रुपीज देन यू आर रिक्वायर टू इशू ई इनवाइस इट इज मैंडेटरी फॉर यू इट इज नॉट ऑप्शनल you need to issue e invoice now comes the question how do i calculate this aggregate turnover now this aggregate turnover is pan based so it is not gst in based that is to say let us say in karnataka your turnover is 15 crore rupees and in the state of telangana your turnover is 10 crore rupees so collective turnover 15 crore plus 10 crore that is 25 crore so your aggregate turnover crosses 20 crore rupees so you are supposed to or you are supposed to issue invoices in e invoice format now how do you calculate your turnover it is again you have to total export of goods export of services supply between distinct persons now who are distinct persons let us say i have one branch in karnataka one more branch in telangana my own branches so from one branch i am trans uh, i am supplying or i am transferring goods or services then even that will be included in the meaning of aggregate turnover Now, not just taxable supplies, even exempt supplies are included in the value of aggregate turnover. Now, if I am supplying exempted goods or exempted services or nil-rated goods or even non-taxable goods, that is also included in the meaning of aggregate turnover. Let me give one simple example. Let's say I have a, I am also supplying alcohol, uh, alcoholic liquor that is a non-taxable goods. To the value of fifteen crore rupees, then I am making some taxable supplies to the tune of ten crore rupees. So while calculating this aggregate turnover, I have to add that fifteen crore plus ten crore. Then I should check my eligibility. But it will exclude inward RCM supplies. That is, if I am taking, let us say, some lawyer services, advocate services, on which I am paying tax under reverse charge mechanism, that should not be part of my aggregate turnover. At the same time, GST should not be part of my aggregate turnover. A simple example would be, let us say. my supply in the last year is 19 crore rupees plus i have also collected 2 crore rupees of gst so total it is 20 crore rupees that has come to my bank account but still the aggregate turnover is 19 crore rupees only so tax is not to be added in the meaning of aggregate turnover so if applicability is clear to you let us also talk about non applicability let us say your turnover exceeds 20 crore rupees but still if you are a government department e invoicing is not applicable to you if you are a local authority or if you are a scz unit or if you are a bank or a insurer or a nbfc that is non banking financial companies or if you are a goods transportation agency or if you are providing passenger transport services or if you are a multiplex that is you have a multiple screens where you are displaying movies then the concept of e invoicing is not applicable to you that means you can issue the normal invoice okay except this for all the businesses if your turnover crosses 20 crore rupees in any of the preceding years then e invoicing is applicable to you now comes the question is let us say my turnover is more than 20 crore rupees now for which of the transaction i should issue the e invoice so the law is very clear it says as on today you should issue e invoices for only b to b supplies that is business to business supplies or even export supplies maybe you can export out of the country or even supply to scz with the payment of duty without payment of duty that does not matter you are supposed to issue e invoice but if you are supplying b to c let us say you go to a shopping mall a grocery store maybe their turnover is more than 20 crore rupees but if you are buying some a biscuit or a soap are they supposed to issue e invoice to you answer is no for b to c supplies e invoice is not applicable at the same time if i am also making exempt supplies of goods or services then even if my turnover exceeds 20 crore rupees i am not liable to issue e invoice so only when you are making taxable supplies that too for a business to business transaction or export transaction the concept of e invoice is applicable to you so if this is clear let us move on now what is the benefit of e invoice now, as i was saying in the very first slide we need a system which can function on different platforms now what is the benefit of this let us say that i have an accountant i am a businessman i am a supplier i have an accountant so he will raise one invoice with all the detailed information it will have my gstin it will have my uh, recipient's gstin it will have my address my buyer's address all the different items 
At the same time, it will also include details of HSN code, SAC code, what is the value of supply, and what is the tax rate, what is the taxable value. So my accountant will put considerable amount of time in generating one invoice. What is going to happen is this data is available with all the GST department. Now, how does this function? I'll give one for simple example so that most of our confusions are clear. In earlier state excise on all the alcohol, all the liquor warehouses had to pay state excise. Now you should, you must be aware that on liquor, the rate of excise duty is pretty high. So government felt that if we allow these warehouses to declare their sale at the end of the month, then they may not declare it properly. So what they did is the government deputed one excise officer in the liquor warehouse itself. So from morning to evening, there would be one person sitting in that warehouse who would see every invoice that has been raised by the liquor warehouse. Okay. So every time a warehouse had to supply a couple of, uh, you know, consignments. So they had to take their invoice to that excise officer. Excise officer would verify what and all is mentioned in that document and he will validate it and he will put his signature and give it back. So only after he affixes his signature, only then warehouse could supply to outside customer. Now in GST, they want to do the same thing, but it is practically impossible for the government to appoint one, one person for individual offices. So what have they done is they have, uh, they have appointed one centralized server, what we are going to call it as IRP, that is invoice registration portal. So what you're supposed to do, you are supposed to prepare one invoice in your accounting software only. Then you are supposed to send a JSON file, one JSON file to this portal. Now this portal will verify all the details that is mentioned in your invoice. Then they are going to give you one invoice reference number. All the technicalities will discuss in the subsequent slide. But all that I'm trying to say here is once you generate the e-invoice, that is once you are sending that JSON file to the IRP, now that IRP will capture all the data. Now they're not going to delete that data. Now that data, they are going to push it to eBay bill. They are going to push it to GSTR one. The same data will go and sit in, sit in your buyer's GSTR two B. So once you raise the uh, e invoice, then you don't have to type the exact same details in your eBay bill. You don't have to type the exact same details in your GSTR one. So only once you create it, the same data is available in the entire ecosystem of GST. Now let us talk about the end, the step number one is you generate an invoice using your accounting software. You don't go to e-invoice e portal and generate there. It is e-invoice portal is just like that officer who will just check and sign. It is not their job to create your e-invoice. You have to use your accounting software to generate the e-invoice according to their standard. Then once you generate it, second thing is your software will send a JSON file. Okay, the software will take care of it. Your software will send a JSON file to the IRP, that is invoice registration portal. So once it goes to the invoice registration portal, the portal will check. You don't have to do anything. That is where I marked in red. The portal will check whether this is a duplicate invoice or not, whether it is only from the current year or not. Certain validations it will do. And then what it is going to do is it is going to give one very specific number to you. That number is called as invoice reference number. Okay, so once IRN is generated, also a QR code will be created. Now, who is going to give this QR code? Again, IRP is only going to give you that QR code. That QR code, you are supposed to display it on your invoice. Okay, next, what you're supposed to do is, next, not you, the invoice registration portal, what it will do is, it will hold that data for 24 hours and then it will delete it. Now, you may ask, if it deletes it, then where is my data? The answer is, before it deletes, it pushes the data to your eBay bill portal. So you don't have to enter all the eBay bill details again. Second thing is it will also push that data to your GSTR one. So you don't have to go and again, fill all the data in your GSTR one. So your eBay bill is taken care of, your GSTR one is taken care of. So automatically the data will appear in your, in the, your buyer's GSTR to be. So no more reconciliation. So, but what is that you are supposed to do? That is step number. Four. The step number four is once you get that QR code, you are supposed to affix that QR code in your invoice and then you are supposed to 
you know you can take a print of the same or you can digitally send it to your buyer but remember one thing the invoice should carry that qr code so this is the whole procedure of how e invoice is generated okay so let us move to the next step that is some faqs on e invoice the first question is can i delete an e invoice answer is if you have uploaded a e invoice but then you realize that there has been certain mistakes then within 24 hours you can go to this e invoice portal and you can delete it the question is what will happen after 24 hours the data is deleted directly from the e invoice portal so you can't delete it in the e invoice portal but the you have to go to your gstr gstin that is while filing your gstr1 you can delete that data from your gstr1 now second question is i have uploaded it but i don't want to delete it but i want to make some changes so instead of 1 lakh i have just written only 10000 rupees so can i amend this answer is no once you upload it you can't amend it so what is better is you delete it and regenerate one more now again the question is can i use the same invoice number answer is no once you use the invoice number you cannot use the same invoice number you have to use next invoice number second question is should i print the qr code answer is yes it is mandatory for you to print the qr code third question is how to verify this qr code again previously as i told previously there is an app in the play store which is again released by the authorities which you have to download and there there is an option to scan the qr code using that qr code you can scan it so one more question would be what happens when there is a rcm supply so let us say i am receiving the service of a lawyer for which i have to pay tax under reverse charge mechanism so should i generate the e invoice answer is no always e invoice should be generated by the supplier so as a recipient you have to generate one invoice that is under section 313 f but it is not going to be a e invoice fourth question is can i re the fifth next question is can i reuse the cancelled invoice no so once you give one number the same number you can't use it you have to give the next number so what are the different ways to generate the e invoice now there is one offline utility in the e invoice portal you can use that for bulk generation of the e invoice another way is you can have a direct api if your turnover is more than 500 crore rupees or alternatively you can use uh, you can take the help of your erps that is the accounting software that you use or you can take the help of gst suvidha providers so using all these different avenues you can generate your e invoice so this was all about e invoice but before i end one simple thing that i want to talk about e invoice is e invoice is not a digital form of your invoice it is not the pdf copy it is the normal invoice that you have with the qr code on it that is what e invoice is okay now let us move to the second segment of our talk that is about audit trail now what exactly is audit trail let us just go to the meaning of it it says audit trail is a detailed chronological record whereby accounting records or other financial data are tracked and traced now i'll give one simple example so that the concept of audit trail becomes absolutely clear so on your screen you can see a journal entry it says it is entered on 1st april 2022 it's a simple journal entry that is cash account debited to sales account 10,000, 10,000. So the entry is captured. So whenever we are talking about accounting, it only records what. So we have sold something for cash of 10,000 rupees. But you will not know who created that journal entry. You may have 10 different accountants. So you would not know who created the entry. You would not know when this journal entry was created. The date shows 1st April 2022, but maybe this entry was passed in the month of May. So you would not know when was this entry passed or you would not also know the changes that are being made. Let us say this actual sale took for, let us say for 15,000 rupees, but one of your accountant just modified this entry. So 15,000 rupees, he has changed it to 10,000 rupees and he has taken away 5,000 from your cash drawer. How would you know? So you need to have a software feature which not only captures what, but it also captures who passed the entry, when was this entry passed, or whether there is any changes in any of these entries. Now the question is, why are we talking about audit trail? So the government has made it mandatory that the audit trail feature has to be mandatorily enabled from 1-4-2022 onwards.
Now this is applicable. Now this is applicable to all the companies. Now when I say all the companies, I'm talking about companies that have been registered under Companies Act 2013 or the erstwhile 1956. So whether you're a listed company, unlisted company, whether you're a public company, private company, or even if you're a one person company, the audit trail is applicable to you, but it is not applicable to LLP. It is not applicable to individuals and partnership firm. So if you are LLP or individual or partnership firm, the concept of audit trail is not applicable, but for all the other companies, for all the companies, the feature of audit trail is applicable. Now you may have the question as to where it is written in the law, because unless it is written in the law, I'm, I need not follow it. So there are two sections. There is one section called as section 134. And there is one more section called as section 143. So section 134 talks how a company should maintain its books. So 134 clearly says that your account should be, if you are maintaining in an electronic form, then your software should have a feature of maintaining your audit trail. Okay, that is as told in 134. Now comes the question, if it is applicable to me, but still I am just maintaining my data in Excel. So what is going to be my penalty? So 134 lays down a fine. It will, it says that for a company, the penalty is 3 lakh rupees. It's a straight slab. It is not maximum minimum. For a company, it is 3 lakh rupees. Not just this, all the board of directors at the end of the financial year are supposed to issue something called as board's report. So in that board's report, they're supposed to mention whether they have enabled this feature or not. If they don't do that, then for the directors, there is a fine of 50,000 rupees. For each director, there is a fine of 50,000 rupees. Now, there is one more section called as section 143. That is for auditors. So, what the law says? So, there is one rule called as rule 11 clause G. It is for the auditors. Auditor has to compulsorily or mandatorily write in his audit report what that is whether this company is using accounting software or not. If they're using that accounting software, whether the software has recorded all the transaction, okay, it should not happen that for 50 percentage you are using, uh, if you're not using audit trail for 50 percentage, you're using different software. Now, the next question is whether that software has a feature of audit trail. That is whether the software is recording the data of who is passing the entry, when he is passing the entry, what are the changes that is happening? Then the next question is whether this feature of audit trail operated throughout the year. So it should not happen that for first 11 months, you're using Microsoft Excel for the maintaining of your books of account. And only in the 12th month, you're switching to a software which has audit trail feature. So they are asking whether this feature is existing for all the 12 months. The next question is, is it a non-tampered audit trail? So normally in all the softwares, we see that you can either enable the options or you can disable the option. So they are saying, are you using an accounting software which does not let you to disable audit trail feature? Okay, so the auditor has to comment on that as well. And the next one is whether audit trail is preserved. So in companies, are, you are supposed or you're expected to maintain the document for eight years. So an auditor is supposed to talk about whether this audit trail is again maintained for at least eight years period. Now, this auditor has to mention his audit report. So if auditor does not comment on this, then again, there is a fine of, uh, there is a penalty of one lakh rupees that is levied on auditor as well. So the MC is very strict. It is saying if management does not follow, we will levy penalty on them. If the board of directors does not follow, we will levy a penalty on them. If auditor does not follow, we will levy a penalty on them. So the, both the concepts that we discussed today, whether it is e-invoice, that is also mandatory from 1 4 2022 onwards for the businesses whose turnover is more than 20 crore rupees. At the same time, the, this audit trail feature for all the companies, it is mandatory starting from 1 4 2022 onwards. So now we have come to the end of both the concept of e-invoice as well as the audit trail. Now Vaishal is going to take you through the demo of how exactly we can generate e-invoice using Zoho. At the same time, how audit trail feature can be used in Zoho. Over to you Vaishal. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you everybody. So we'll now walk, uh, we now know what uh, e-invoicing and audit trail is. So let's take a quick look how Zoho Books will help you being uh, say e-invoice as well as audit compliant, audit trail compliant. So let me quickly share my material. So did you know that Zoho Books is a unified compliance solution? 
That is, you'll be able to validate all your invoices via IRP and the validated invoice details will automatically be pushed to the GSTN portal. And you'll also be able to generate eBay bill simultaneously along with your e-invoice. Enough said, let me show you how uh, you can enable e-invoicing Zoho Corp. The first step is to register Zoho Corporation as your GSP. So log into the website e-invoice1.gst.gov.in. You can choose the uh, through GSP as your API interface, and you can select Zoho Corporation as your GSP from the drop down. Generate a username and password. And once you've generated the username and password, we can go ahead and add the same in Zoho. Uh, we'll quickly jump to Zoho Books. And in Zoho Books, yeah. So in Zoho Books, we'll go to the settings, uh, preferences section, and under e invoicing, we'll add, we'll enable the e invoicing feature first. And once that is done, we can configure the API credentials that we created previously. So add the username and password and validate. So once the validation is done, you will be able to cut. You have connected now uh, to the IRP portal and you can generate e invoice from Zoho Books anytime. So this is a simple process. So before we go ahead and create invoices, we have to make a couple of changes in the templates. So invoice templates are nothing but a place to configure how your invoice PDF will look like. So we can edit one of these templates and make sure that the QR code, like uh, the IRN details, are added there. So we'll go to the footer section of the template and we'll add the necessary uh, IRN information such as the QR code, uh, IRN, acknowledgement number and acknowledgement date. Once done, we'll save this template. So now that we have connected our Zoho books to IRP portal and we made necessary changes in the template, we can go ahead and create new transactions. So as you all know, the invoice uh, template, so invoice module will be available under sales. So let's try create a new invoice and push that to the IRP portal. So we'll select the customer. So make sure that the billing address, shipping address, along with the GSTIN details are provided. So the place of supply, invoice number, invoice date will be picked up automatically. If you require to make any changes, you can do so. Uh, these are mandatory fields and must not be missed. So next up, we'll select the item which we are selling. Uh, ensure that the HSN code of the item is provided and you can select the quantity. So based on the item configuration, rate and tax will be picked up automatically. So we will save the invoice now. So this is the invoice overview section where you'll be able to see, uh, see the invoice that you've just saved. And on top, as you notice, the invoice, the e-invoice status is yet to be pushed. So you can double check all the invoice details, make sure all the details are given and push it to IRP. So you'll have a pop-up with two options. One is to just generate e-invoice alone, other to generate e-invoice along with your e-label details. So based on your preference, you can choose what is the option that you prefer it. Uh, so right now I'm gonna give push only invoice details. If our invoice has all the necessary details, the IRN gets generated successfully. So you will have the IRN generated. And as you can see, the invoice has changed the status to pushed, correct? And we also have the option of seeing the invoice as well as the QR code right in the invoice. So in case, in case if you missed out on any mandatory fields, the invoice generation will be failed and the uh, status of the invoice will change to fail. And the reason for the failure will also be shown on top of the invoice. So what you can do is you can edit the invoice, make the necessary changes and repush it again. So we also have an option of canceling the invoice right within Zoho box. So you can select cancel invoice, mention the reason and the remarks and cancel it. So you can cancel the invoice within 24 hours. It will also be canceled in the IRP portal. However, as previously mentioned, if the 24 hours time limit period has been elapsed, right? You have to go to the GST portal and cancel it. And then you have to manually mark the invoice as canceled in Zoho Books. So this is the process of invoicing in Zoho Books. Let's, we'll have multiple invoices, right? So you'll have to have a view to check out what is the status of e-invoicing for your invoices. So we have a status called push for e-invoicing. So as the name suggests, this is the invoices which have been successfully pushed to the e-invoice portal and the IRN has been generated. Next up, we have yet to be pushed for e-invoicing. So these are the invoices which have not been pushed to the e-invoice portal yet. So you can bulk select them and push it to the IRP for IRN creation. That is also possible. And next up, we have final view, which is the paid transactions view. So these are the 
uh, transactions which have been failed on e invoicing so what we can do is we can edit the transactions and we can re-push them to the irp portal so similarly you can also create e invoices for your credit notes and debit notes from zoho books so this is e invoicing uh, and with zoho books you'll be able to create e invoices quick and easy and with no no hurry yeah uh, so next up we'll have a look at the audit rail compliance uh, so in any accounting software it is mandatory for you to you know keep track of the changes that are happening in a transaction or keep track of the actions that is being performed by the user in your organization so worry not zoho books is here to help you so let me take a transaction that i've created in zoho books okay so i wish to know what are the transaction what are the changes this particular transaction has gone to so with the help of audit trials that we have in zoho books this can down this can now be done very quickly so let's go to the report section we'll go to the activity uh, details report so activity logs report is nothing but a detailed information on all the actions and activities that are performed in your organization this denotes when what who where of an action that is performed in books okay so you can see it for any time period so you can customize this report and select a time period if required so activity log report gives you a opportunity to review the actions that are performed in your organization in case of suspected fraud you can see what are the actions that are performed you will be able to see activity details that are done uh, what are the actions performed by each user uh, what are the changes done to a customer or a vendor and you can also see various operation types like create delete or update operation types and if there has been changes made to the pi fields in zoho books that can also be seen so whenever there is a change happening to a transaction the activity log reports create a new version of the transaction okay and you will be able to uh, compare these versions side by side so let's select like two versions and compare the changes that has occurred in this particular transaction so the two versions are displayed side to side right so you will be able to see the highlighted versions are the changes that have been made to this particular transaction so there are different changes made so the yellow color signifies the data that has been modified and pink color signifies the data that has been completely removed from the invoice and green color suggests the data that has been added to the invoice so with these versions compared side to side it becomes easier to track the changes so and you are now ready for audits any time so it's quite helpful isn't it so with audit trials you can keep track on your user actions and perform end to end tracking of all your transactions uh, data security data security and have stress free audits and what more this audit trials are also tamper proof uh, well that brings us to the end of our product walkthrough on audit trials as well as e invoicing we hope you are able to check out uh, all the features how uh, e invoicing audit trial works in real time in zoho books so to sum up with zoho books you will be able to become e invoice as well as audit trial compliant in azure so we also now have some uh, time for extra questions so we'll take a few more questions if that's okay with you anish so now there is one question as to how will we know if our supplier is about 20 crore bracket a very good question in fact so what you can do is you can go to e invoice portal there there is one option for you to check the status of the supplier so there you are supposed to put the gstin of the supplier and then the portal will reply saying that whether the e invoicing has been enabled or not if it is enabled then he has to issue you a e invoice now how do you know that whether it is actually a e invoice or not on the invoice there has to be a qr code if there is a qr code you can use one government application that again is available in the play store the link of which is there in the e invoice portal you can download that app then there is one option to scan the qr code once you scan the qr code you will get to know whether this is directly coming from I, uh, irp or not that is the answer so some there is a okay uh, i think the next question is whether uh, it has to be a uh, aggregate turnover like till like all these year whatever turnover should no, be no. add them up for a particular year so it is it is a financial year basis so 1718 you see 
18, 19 you see separately, 19, 20 you see separately. You don't add all the years together. No. It is year wise turnover you see, whether in any year if you have crossed 20 crore or not. From each year, April, you start fresh. I guess there's also another. Is it B2C or B2B? I told it very clearly. It is going to be only B2B only. It is not going to be for B2C supplies. How can I check uh, supplies eligible to issue e invoice? I think uh, Anvesha answered it previously. Uh, yeah, so if there's any questions, you can also uh, add them. We'll have it answered right away. Okay, I guess we also have a couple of questions in the questions tab. So, uh, is it applicable for transport or GT? Uh, Anvish, could you guide them on that? One second. So, if the question is as far as GTA is concerned, no, it is not applicable for goods transportation agents. It is not applicable. It is specifically excluded because they are covered under Rule 54, not covered under Rule 46. Okay. Uh, we also have a question called whether e invoice is applicable for export invoices. So yes, for all the export transaction, whether it is with the payment of duty or without payment of duty, it is applicable. Yeah. So can we cancel the e invoice on the same day or or a day after tomorrow? Anvish, do you want to take up this question? Okay. So once you upload an e invoice, you will still get twenty four hours. The government felt that one day of time is more than enough for you to realize your mistake and cancel it. So you can go to the portal and you can cancel your invoice within twenty four hours. But if you don't do it, then also it is possible, but not by going to the invoice portal. You have to go to another portal. So that is of GST. So while filing your GST R one. The data has automatically come from your IRP. So the data will be visible. You can click on that and you can delete it. That is possible even after 24 hours, but from a GSTR point. Okay. So we have a next question. So what are the difficulties in the future by raising a credit note? Uh, so what are the difficulties that they might face for raising a No, it is just like how you generate the invoice. By again, you send a JSON file and you get a QR code. Similarly, credit note also you're supposed to generate. So you issue the invoice, sorry, you issue the credit note, send it to the IRP, they will give you a QR code, you affix it and you give it to your customer. So there is a question that uh, can we opt for invoicing even if it is not applicable to our company? Presently, no. So it is only if your turnover is more than 20 crore rupees, you can opt or you should opt for e-invoice. If it is less than that, as, as on the law that stands today, you cannot opt for e-invoice. What if it in the last year, it, had, it was more than 20 crore rupees and it is less than 20 crore rupees? It does not matter. The question is very simple. Whether in any of the previous year, even if it is one year, once, if it goes more than 20 crore rupees, Forever, you are supposed to issue e invoice. When are you required to push the invoice from Zoho Books to IRP before sending it to the customer? Answer is absolutely yes, before sending it to the customer. So you can raise the invoice today, but maybe after one day, you can send it to the IRP. You can take your time. Before giving it to your customer, you need to send it to the IRP, get that QR code, put it on the face of your invoice, then give it to your customer. If not, then your invoice is not an invoice at all. If limit 20 crore crossed in 20 to 23, then from which date? So when you look at the law, it simply says all the previous year, it does not talk about the current year. So if it exceeds 20 crore in 20 to 23, then from the next year onwards, so it is always from the beginning of the year you opt for it, not from the middle of the year. So if in 20 to 23 it crosses, then for the 23, 24, you should opt for e-invoicing. There is a question that business is having both taxable as well as exempted or nil-rated turnover, which should be considered for calculating 20 crore. Answer is aggregate turnover. It simply means total of your taxable turnover as well as your exempt turnover. When I say exempt, I'm talking about your nil rated, exempted by notification and non-taxable. So all the turnover put together, your 20 crore is calculated for a financial year. Question is, can we create a single invoice on portal or it needs to be created? Now, you don't create an invoice in the portal. That is the first thing. 
but there is a bulk invoice you, that you can generate so you have to download an excel utility you have to upload or you have to fill in all the data there and then from there you are supposed to create a json file okay but you can use that utility to generate invoices in bulk as well is it applicable to scz invoices answer is yes it is applicable for scz invoices also So in our invoices, what are all the mandatory things that you should be printed? QR code, IRN number, acknowledgement number, acknowledgement date, or all four. Okay. Now, what law requires is you put QR code that is enough. Why? Because that QR code, whenever you scan it, all these details will come in that QR code. So it is not necessary for you to put any other. You it is not necessary to put even IRN number also. Because once you scan it, you can get the IRN number, you get the acknowledgement number, you get the acknowledgement date. So what is mandatory is you just put the QR code. What if it is what if it is 20 crores including GST? No. Exclude the, so the thing is you just have one calculation and then remove the GST portion from it. Whatever the balance is there, if it is more than 20 crores, please, then you are eligible or you are liable under for registration under e-invoicing. generate e invoice if you don't have a turnover more than 20 crore rupees no you should not again there is one option in e invoice uh, web portal that for a self registration so you can go there and say that my turnover is actually more than 20 crore rupees so you enable me but if your turnover does not exceed 20 crore don't do that if i'm providing services only is it applicable answer is yes it is not for taxable supply of goods it is for taxable supply exceeding 20 crore rupees as long as you're supplying to business to business export of services e invoice to be raised in foreign currency or inr now whenever you are exporting there are normally two invoices that you uh, raise one is in the, one is for the commercial invoice that is for the buyer in the foreign currency and one is the normal invoice that you raise the normal invoice that you raise that should have the qr code so there is a question which says if we have two GST number of same company, so this is applicable for both the GST. Answer is yes. It is applicable if you are having, let us say, two GST number in two different states or probably 20 different GST numbers in 20 different states. It is applicable for all the GST numbers as if your turnover exceeds 20 crore put together in any of the previous year. One very interesting question that is material delivering in, into party by delivery chalan and invoice will be raised the next day. In case e invoice to be raised for delivery chalan or invoice, say whenever I talk about e invoice, only three things are included that is invoice, credit note, debit note. So, del for delivery chalan, you are not supposed to issue a e invoice. So, when the next day when you are issuing the invoice, that day you are supposed to generate uh, that IRN, that is, that day you are supposed to issue a e invoice. There is one more question. Can we generate the invoice and save it in e invoicing portal in 23rd hour so that we can do any changes required or will it save automatically in e invoicing portal immediately? So one thing that I want to clarify here is you are not you are not creating invoice in the portal. What you are what you are doing is you are uploading it from your device. Okay. So the moment you upload it, immediately it is registered there. So if it passes the validation criteria, then it is accepted and details are stored there only. But let us say you are using the same invoice number twice, then the second request will be rejected. Okay, so there is no time lag. Within milliseconds, it will be registered in the IRP portal. So for export of services, e invoice to be raised in foreign currency or INR. So whenever you are raising the invoice in you know, INR, in that invoice, you are supposed to raise the QR code, not in your commercial invoice. You don't have to get a, a real time exchange rate because it is applicable for the domestic uh, the invoice in the domestic currency. So, if credit note is issued for discount, should we issue a e invoice? Answer is yes. So, credit notes can be issued only for few purposes. So, for whatever the purpose you're issuing the credit note, then for all those cases, you are supposed to issue a e invoice with the credit or with the QR code. Then if IRN invoice portal, if it shows already registered, then how should we sync Zoho with IRN invoice portal? I believe Vaishali, this is a question for you. Uh, yeah. So uh, in case, so if 
there are multiple gstns in an organization right in, in, i presume that is the case so if you have multiple gstns in an organization each gstn should be registered have should have a different api credential and those have api credential should be locked in so even in my uh, video i would have shown that there will be three different uh, gstns so for each gstn the api credential should be separately generated and you have to add that into uh, into zoho box for irp connection i hope that answers the query so there is one more question that says uh, we make export invoices in foreign currency so what about the exchange rate so you have to raise one invoice in the domestic currency in that you have to put the qr code that is point number one again the exchange rate is visible in the uh, available in your cbic website next one is can we make an invoice on first april and send it to ir portal after filing the shipping bill that is after three four days ideally what you're supposed to do is whenever you are moving your goods that time only you are supposed to raise the e invoice, not after filing the shipping bill. But I understand that there are certain practical problems. But what is ideal is whenever you are sending there, you are supposed to issue a e invoice. Is it mandated to generate the e invoice at the time of supply, or can I supply goods using e way bill and then upload them in the e invoice portal at the end of the day? Now, the scheme of the law functions this way: you create the invoice you upload the json file to the invoice portal get approval from there print the qr code from your invoice then you generate the ebay bill then you move the goods so this is the scheme of law so you are not supposed to first raise the ebay bill then you raise the e invoice that is not how it is to be done so you need to follow the chronology what about those who are already registered for ebay bill do we still need to re-register uh, re no, you can use the same credentials to log into the e invoice portal. In e invoice portal registration, AP integration is not yet enabled for turnover less than 500 crore rupees. Is this in a development stage? So, as of now, uh, the direct API is available only for if your turnover exceeds 500 crore rupees. If it is below than that, then direct API is not yet enabled. So, only those people more than 500 crore rupees can. To the direct api other others have to use the other methods that we already discussed either through your erps or gst with the providers or bulk uploads yes, we have taken all the questions uh Vaishali, am i missing any questions uh, yeah i think there is one question in hindi hum zoho mein kaun se bank ko add kare jisse hum bank ka role ka vision dek sake i hope uh aap reconciliation ko refer kar rahe uh, uh, so, um, uh, we are connected with a lot of banks. So, uh, you go book the banking section mein ja ke apna bank uh, name enter kijiye. Wo, uh, list mein drop down mein available hai. So, zero aap usko connect karke aapke statements ko bank se zero books mein every 24 hours sync kar sakte hai. And we are integrated with certain banks like ICICI, Standard Chartered Bank, BS Bank, Kotak Bank, HSBC Bank. So, inke saath hamara direct integration hai. So, if you integrate them with them, you know, automatically see Zoho Books. In this case, you can also import your bank's PDF statements in Zoho Books mein directly in a single clip. So, you have multiple options and you can see Zoho Books' banking model. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So, I think we have taken uh, up most of the questions. So, uh, uh, just to have any live uh, questions, if anyone wants to raise hand now, please let us know. I think we we'll need a list for we'll just continue for another 10 minutes and then we will wrap up this session. Okay, I'm enabling Mr. Vikash Kumar. Uh, Mr. Vikash, if you have any questions, let us know. Hello. Yes, Mr. Vikash. Mr. Vikash, could you quickly let us know your question? Okay, so I'm enabling uh, it for Mr. Vikram.
Vikram ji, if you have any questions. Okay. <laughs> so we thought if uh, you have any live questions, we can answer them as well. Okay, one more I'll try. Mr. I'm not sure, Mr. or Mrs. Bruti. So I've enabled it for you as well. Hello. Yes. Yes. Please let us know your question. Yeah. So actually, I wanted to ask that uh, this e invoicing is basically on real time basis, right? So basically, uh, my industry work in a manner that I have to pass backdated entries of the month end. Like my reports get generated after five to six days from the month end, and basically, I have to pass the uh, entries of sales on the last day of the month so is it possible okay so uh, now uh, okay so you are saying that uh, you are supposed to pass a backdated entry to generate a irp so normally what happens is when you look at section 31 mm -hmm. it talks about when you are supposed to issue an invoice mm -hmm. so when you look at section 31 it says whenever your supply involves movement of goods that means from one place goods is moving to another place then before or at the time of that moment, you are supposed to issue the invoice. No, actually, I work in a service industry. My company belongs to service industry. Mm. And uh, basically, how it works, you know, basically, we are the channel, uh, media channel. So whatever reports get generated, that is after five to six days, like what advertisement uh, were telecasted and all on the basis of that, we invoice. So it happens only after five to six days. And that is uh, that is for the last month. So, so as far as service is concerned, the GST law says that you will get 30 days from the date of completion of service to issue the invoice. So let us say you completed your service on 30th of the previous month. So you will still have 30 more days to raise your invoice. So when you are raising the invoice, at that time you issue the e-invoice. Okay, but uh, be, uh, like uh, if I am raising on 10th and if I put the date as 30th of last month, then is that okay? Huh. So, invoice date can be the backdated one, but the e invoice, the acknowledgement date, and uh, the all the IRN will be generated only for the present date. Okay. So, why am I saying this is because the buyer now talking about input tax credit. Now, let us say my invoice date is of the previous month, but I'm generating e invoice in the current month. So whether my buyer will be able to claim credit in the last month, answer is no. Only in the after I generate the e invoice, he will be able to take the okay, credit. Okay, so one month ITC will be delayed to the buyer. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. One. Thank you. And also, there has been a couple of questions which I missed as far as e-commerce is concerned. So if you are a dealer who is selling your goods or goods using probably Amazon or Flipkart, so how do you generate the e invoice? Because it is not you who raise the invoice, it is those people who raise the invoice. So there is a particular option for Amazon to raise e invoice on behalf of you. In most of the circumstances, it is the supplier who raises the invoice. But if you are supplying through Amazon or Flipkart or these e-commerce entities, then they can raise e invoice on behalf of you but you should register them as your e-commerce provider okay thank you so much mr abnesh uh, so there is just two more questions which i think we can take up and then we can close this so one question is like my business is more than 20 crore what happens if the gst officer stops a vehicle and if there is no e invoice but the e way is available so now again, again, I'm going back to the, the, the rule 48 sub rule 5. It says if it is not e invoice, then it is not an invoice at all. So where he is intercepting, first he will check e way bill. So then if e way bill is there, but still invoice is not there, then he may detain your vehicle saying that you don't have a valid invoice. So again, uh, this could be one of the issue that if you don't have an invoice, then they may detain your vehicle, saying that it is not a valid invoice. Okay, thank you. Are we able to validate the user from portal, either they are registered or e-invoice or not? 
uh, what I understand is the question is whether whether you can check whether your seller is enabled for e invoicing or not. Answer is yes. You can go to e invoice website. There, there is a specific search bar where you are supposed to put the GSTN of your seller and the website will return with the value saying that whether they are enabled for e-invoice or not. But again, this is not, what do I say? Uh, uh, this is not conclusive in all senses. For example, it may so happen that your supplier, his turnover is more than 20 crore rupees in any of the past years, but due to certain reporting errors that he has not uploaded all the data in that year. So because of which his e-invoicing is not enabled in the website. So it is always better to take an undertaking from your supplier. If you're making bulk purchases, take an undertaking from your suppliers, which states that his turnover in any of the previous year has not exceeded 20 crore rupees. That would uh, establish your bona fide. Yeah, so we also have another question. So when we give out samples, right, uh, to our customers, uh, the cost, uh, one of our customers asked whether we need to raise an e invoice for the same for the invoices raised to just share the sample of a product. Question is when you are giving a sample, the simple question is whenever you are giving a sample, would you raise an invoice for him? So, is there any consideration that is involved? If there is no consideration, let us say it is purely a sample. So, if there is no consideration, when you look at section 7, subsection 1, it clearly says that if there is no consideration, it is not a supply. So if it is not a supply, then there is no question of raising the invoice is concerned. So if I'm not raising the invoice, then there is no question of raising e invoice is concerned. So you just raise a delivery channel and send the goods to him. So there is a question which says, if we have two GST number of same company, so this is applicable for both the GST. Answer is yes. It is applicable if you are having, let us say, two GST number in two different states or probably 20 different GST numbers in 20 different states. It is applicable for all the GST numbers as if your turnover exceeds 20 crore put together in any of the previous year. One very interesting question that is material delivering in, into party by delivery chalan and invoice will be raised the next day. In case e invoice to be raised for delivery chalan or invoice said. Whenever I talk about e invoice, only three things are included. That is invoice, credit note, debit note. So deli for delivery chalan, you are not supposed to issue a e invoice. So when the next day when you are issuing the invoice, that day you are supposed to generate uh, that IRA. That is that day you are supposed to issue a e invoice. There is one more question. Can we generate the invoice and save it in invoicing portal in 23rd hour so that we can do any changes required or will it save automatically in invoicing portal immediately? So one thing that I want to clarify here is you are not you are not creating invoice in the portal. What you are, what you are doing is you are uploading it from your device. Okay. So the moment you upload it, immediately it is registered there. So if it passes the validation criteria, then it is accepted and details are stored there only. But let us say you are using the same invoice number twice, then the second request will be rejected. Okay, so there is no time lag. Within milliseconds, it will be registered in the IRP portal. So for export of services, e-invoice to be raised in foreign currency or INR. So whenever you are raising the invoice in you know, INR, in that invoice, you are supposed to raise the QR code, not in your commercial invoice. So you don't have to get a, a real-time exchange rate because it is applicable for the domestic, uh, the invoice in the domestic currency. So if credit note is issued for discount, should we issue a e invoice? Answer is yes. So credit notes can be issued only for few purposes. So for whatever the purpose you're issuing the credit note, then for all those cases, you are supposed to issue a e invoice with the credit or with the QR code. Then if IRN invoice portal, if it shows already registered, then how should we sync Zoho with IRN invoice portal? I believe Vaishali, this is a question for you. Uh, yeah. So uh, in case, so if uh, there are multiple GSTNs in an organization, right? In, in, I presume that is the case. So if you have multiple GSTNs in an organization, each GSTN should be registered, have, should have a different API credential and those have API credentials should be locked in. So even in my uh, video, I would have shown that there will be three different uh, GSTNs. So for each GSTN, the API credential should be separately generated and you have to add that into, uh, into Zoho Box for IRP connection. I hope that answers the query. So there is one more question that says, uh, we make export invoices in foreign currencies. So what about the exchange rate? 
so you have to raise one invoice in the domestic currency in that you have to put the qr code that is point number one again the exchange rate is visible in the, uh, available in your cbic website next one is can we make an invoice on first april and send it to ir portal after filing the shipping bill that is after three four days ideally what you're supposed to do is whenever you are moving your goods that time only you are supposed to raise the e invoice not after filing the shipping bill but i understand that there are certain practical problems but what is ideal is whenever you are sending there you are supposed to issue a e invoice is it mandatory to generate the e invoice at the time of supply or can i supply goods using e way bill and then upload them in the e invoice portal at the end of the day now the scheme of the law functions this way you create the invoice you upload the JSON file to the invoice portal, get approval from there, print the QR code from your invoice, then you generate the eBay bill, then you move the goods. So this is the scheme of law. So you are not supposed to first raise the eBay bill, then you raise the e invoice. That is not how it is to be done. So you need to follow the chronology. What about those who are already registered for eBay bill? Do we still need to re-register? Uh, re no, you can use the same credentials to log into the e invoice portal. In e invoice portal registration, AP integration is not yet enabled for turnover less than 500 crore rupees. Is this in a development stage? So, as of now, uh, the direct API is available only for if your turnover exceeds 500 crore rupees. If it is below than that, then direct API is not yet enabled. So, only those people more than 500 crore rupees can to the direct API, other, others have to use the other methods that we already discussed, either through your ERPs or GST through the providers or bulk uploads. We have taken all the questions. Uh, Vaishali, am I missing any questions? Uh, yeah, I think there is one question in Hindi. Hum jogo mein kaun se bank ko add kare, jitne hum bank ka role ka return dek sake. I hope uh, aap reconciliation ko refer kar diya. Uh, uh, so, we are connected with a lot of banks. So, our logo book in the banking section, we will enter our bank name. It is in the list of drop down. So, you can connect your statements to the bank in the logo book. Every 24 hours, you can sync. And we are integrated with certain banks like ICICI, Standard Chartered Bank, BS Bank, Kotak Bank, HSBC Bank. So, we have a direct integration with them. So, if you integrate with them, you will automatically see the Zoho books. Besides, you can also see the bank's PDF statements in the Zoho books directly in a single clip. So, if you have multiple options, you will see the Zoho books in the banking module. Okay. Okay. Next question. Just to have any live uh, questions, if anyone wants to raise hand now, please let us know. I think we need to this for we just continue for another two to three minutes, and then we will wrap up this session. Okay, I'm enabling Mr. Vikash Kumar. Uh, Mr. Vikash, if you have any questions, let us know. Hello. Yes, Mr. Vikash. Mr. Vikash, could you quickly let us know your question? Okay, so I'm enabling uh, it for Mr. Vikram. Vikram ji, if you have any questions. Okay, <laughs> so we thought if uh, you have any live questions, we can answer them as well. Okay, one more I'll try, Mr. Not sure, Mr. or Mrs. Bruti. So I've enabled it for you as well. Hello. Yes, yes, please let us know your question. Yeah, so actually, I wanted to ask that uh, this e invoicing is basically on real time basis, right? 
so basically uh, my industry work in a manner that i have to pass backdated entries of the month end like my reports get generated after 5 to 6 days from the month end and basically i have to pass the uh, entries of sales on the last day of the month so is it possible okay so uh, now uh, okay so you are saying that uh, you are supposed to pass a backdated entry to generate a irp so normally what happens is when you look at section 31 it mm. talks about when you are supposed to issue a invoice mm. so when you look at section 31 it says whenever your supply involves movement of goods that means from one place goods is moving to another place then before or at the time of that moment you are supposed to issue the invoice no actually i work in a service industry my company belongs to service industry mm. and uh, basically how it works you know basically we are the channel uh, media channel so whatever reports gets generated that is after 5 to 6 days like what advertisement uh, were telecasted and all on the basis of that we invoice so it happens only after 5 to 6 days and that is uh, that is for the last month so so as far as service is concerned the gst law says that you will get 30 days from the date of completion of service to issue the invoice so let us say you completed your service on 30th of the previous month so you will still have 30 more days to raise your invoice so when you are raising the invoice at that time you issue the e invoice okay but uh, be, uh, like uh, if i am raising on 10th and if i put the date as 30th of last month then is that okay Huh. so invoice date can be the back dated one but the e invoice the acknowledgement date and uh, the all the irn will be generated only for the present date oh. so why am i saying this is because the buyer now talking about input tax creditor now let us say my invoice date is of the previous month but i'm generating e invoice in the current month so hmm. whether my buyer will be able to claim credit in the last month answer is no only in the after i generate the e invoice he will be able to take the okay, credit okay so one month itc will be delayed to the buyer yes yes okay okay one. thank you and also there has been a couple of question which i missed as far as e commerce is concerned so if you are a dealer who is selling your goods or goods using probably amazon or flipkart so how do you generate the e invoice because it is not you who raise the invoice it is those people who raise the invoice so there is a particular option for amazon to raise e invoice on behalf of you in most of the circumstances it is a supplier who raise the invoice but if you are supplying through amazon or flipkart or these e commerce entities then they can raise e invoice on behalf of you but you should register them as your e-commerce providers okay thank you so much mr abnesh uh, so there is just two more question which i think we can take up and then we can close this so one question is like my business is more than 20 crore what happens if the gst officer stops a vehicle and if there is no e invoice but the e way is available so now again again i'm going back to the uh, the rule 48 sub rule 5 it says if it is not e invoice then it is not a invoice at all so where he is intercepting first he will check e way bill so then if e way bill is there but still invoice is not there then he may detain your vehicle saying that you don't have a valid invoice so again uh, this could be one of the issue that if you don't have an invoice then they may detain your vehicle saying that it is not a valid invoice okay thank you are we able to validate the user from portal either they are registered or e invoice or not so, uh, what i understand is the question is whether whether you can check whether your seller is enabled for e invoicing or not answer is yes you can go to e invoice website there there is a specific search bar where you are supposed to put the gstn of your seller and the website will return with the value saying that whether they are enabled for e invoice or not but again this is not what do i say uh, uh, this is not conclusive in all senses for example it may so happen that your supplier his turnover is more than 20 crore rupees in any of the past years but due to certain reporting errors that he has not uploaded all the data in that year so because of which his e invoicing is not enabled in the website 
So it is always better to take an undertaking from your supplier. If you're making bulk purchases, take an undertaking from your suppliers, which states that his turnover in any of the previous year has not exceeded 20 crore rupees. That would uh, establish your bona fide. Yeah, so we also have another question. So when we give out samples, right, uh, to our customers, uh, the uh, one of our customers asked whether we need to raise an e invoice for the same for the invoices raised to just share the sample of a product. Question is when you are giving a sample. The simple question is whenever you are giving a sample, would you raise an invoice for him? So is there any consideration that is involved? If there is no consideration, let us say it is purely a sample. So if there is no consideration, when you look at section seven, subsection one. It clearly says that if there is no consideration, it is not a supply. So if it is not a supply, then there is no question of raising the invoice is concerned. So if I'm not raising the invoice, then there is no question of raising e invoice is concerned. So thank you me. just raise a delivery channel and send the goods to him. That's it. Cool. So thank you so much, Mr. Agnesh. Uh, I think we have answered, we have tried answering most of the questions. We have also extended this session. There could be some attendees who would want to, you know, leave uh, because of their, uh, you know, next sessions. So we will wrap up. Uh, it's re it was really, you know, it was an overwhelming response which we have received from all of you. The uh, the number of attendees in the short span of time, and uh, uh, you know, even all the questions which we have received were all, you know, excellent. And uh, Mr. Abnesh has helped us, uh, you know, in answering all of them. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope the session was helpful to you. I know there could have been a couple of questions which are left unanswered. So we are not going to leave them. We are going to definitely make a note of all this. We'll try to have one more follow-up session uh, uh, if possible, where you know uh, we uh, can have our session in such a way that we cover these questions. We'll also try to have our uh, uh, product uh, uh, itself answer those questions uh, you know in terms of FAQ or something so we'll, we'll definitely uh, take the feedback uh, and all the uh, Q&A's uh, from this session and uh, you know help you guys with it thank you so much once again for joining us and making this uh, session a successful one